Welcome to the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia. Metro Conference Basketball on Prime Network. The battle for the Commonwealth of Virginia. The Rams of VCU and the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Hello everyone, I'm Don Russell. It's always something special when two teams get together in the same state in the same conference in college basketball. And our analyst is always in the Metro Conference, Terry Gannon, who played at NC State. And Terry, you know a little bit about a situation like this, and players, I guess, really get pumped up for it. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It's like when you're a kid, the neighborhood brawl. You'd rather beat the kid from your own neighborhood than across town. And if you really doubt that there's something special about these games, look at what Virginia Tech as an underdog did to Virginia earlier in the year. They upset them in this very building that's the last time they suited up here in the Richmond Coliseum since then they've been struggling putting the ball in the basket though you mentioned Thomas Elliott being out the last game the one game suspension they really miss not only the fact that he's their leading scorer and can shoot the basketball from the outside but also his leadership also missing the play of Sean Smith not nearly as aggressive or as effective as he was earlier this year VCU on the other hand coming off the great comeback Kenny Harris what a performance 30 points in the last 10 and a half minutes in that comeback he can explode on you also shouldering some of the scoring load now that Kendrick Warren is out of the lineup Sharon Mills was coming off the bench now starting skill still scoring well I think though Don the key to this team down the stretch is Tyrone McCoy can run the floor can shoot the three he'll battle with you in the paint and if they're going to make a run at the NCAA tournament a bid there he's got to play well you're going to meet the starting lineup for this one in just a minute but the amazing comeback by VCU it came down to the final three seconds of regulation here's what happened the Sharon to trigger it in. It comes into Brower. Here's Brower with the three. That's there! And he ties it! Chris Brower completes the 26 point comeback, and VCU had one foot in the grave, but only one only. And welcome back to Richmond, Virginia. Metro Conference Basketball on Prime Network. The Hokies of Virginia Tech and the Rams of VCU. Now let's meet the starting lineups with PA announcer Hunter Elliott. Ladies and gentlemen, a very pleasant good evening. Welcome to the Richmond Coliseum for tonight's Metro Conference matchup, which features our guests this evening, the Hokies of Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. Starting at a forward position, a freshman from Janesville, Wisconsin, number three, Jim Jackson. Starting at the other forward position, a senior from Chattanooga, Tennessee, number 41, Thomas Elliott. Starting at the center position, a junior from Port Arthur, Texas, number 40, Jimmy Carruth. Starting at a guard, a junior from Blacksburg, number 10, Jay Purcell. And starting at the other guard for the Hokies, a freshman from Columbus, Indiana, number 21, Sean Good. coach at Virginia Tech 25 years overall and that's his overall record his second year at Virginia Tech and Sonny Smith fourth year at VCU an outstanding job you see his career record he's been a successful coach every stop on his venue 
the Hokies in the Ram, Virginia Tech and VCU here in Richmond, Virginia. We're glad to have you along on Prime Network. And you see the matchups, Terry, and I think we'll be watching some uh, very closely. Whoever guards Kenny Harris, and I'm not sure it will be one man, but perhaps Jay Purcell be a key matchup at the point spot, Don. The series record, you see, the 14th game, the last meeting back in early February, won by VCU in Blacksburg. And, of course, Kendrick Warren lost for the rest of the regular season because of that broken foot that you saw happen here on Prime Network. Although, Terry, we understand the cast will come off in early March, and it could he could be available maybe for the Metro Tournament, but certainly if the Rams get some postseason action. Got to be uh, an uplifting idea for the Rams right now, too, because, you know, with the win at South Florida, the great comeback and, and all the emotion of that game, and a chance maybe to get to the NCAA Tournament and know your star's going to be there, I, that'd have to be a motivational factor. Virginia Tech with the first possession of the game. This is big Jimmy Carruth. Very patient offense. Elliott too strong. Jim Jackson tries to get the rebound, and it's knocked out of bounds by Kenny Harris. Jim Burr, Dave Bear, and Wally Tanner are officials out of the Metro tonight. Sonny Smith, he's still... He said there were about 100 people at the airport to greet the team when they came back after that amazing 26-point comeback. Jackson with the head fake. Mills got a piece of it. Thomas Elliott gets the follow-up. And they need a big game inside from Thomas Elliott. Yeah, especially on the glass, too. Virginia Tech has not done that well on the backboards. And they set the uh, set the backboard pace early here. There's Eugene Kasurin way short. Kasurin has already missed more shots now than he missed in the first meeting between these two in Blacksburg. Eugene was perfect from the floor. Two nothing. Straight man, man. Excuse me, down for VCU. But watch how, how, how much everyone's got a foot in the lane or close to it. They like to force the outside shot. Virginia Tech has really struggled shooting the ball. They're not going to gamble all that much defensively. Once again, the patience by Virginia Tech. Here's Good with the three, rolls it off, and Kasurin has the board. And here come the Rams looking for their first points of the game. McCoy didn't get the bounce. A near steal in the backcourt, but freshman Sean Good chases it down. The Ruth inside, off to Good, and the Hokies get the first four points in the game. I'm sure Sonny Smith, well, he's used to seeing a deficit from the other day, but he doesn't want to deal with that again, obviously. I don't think you'd uh, like to see that become a habit. No. You'd hope guys would come to play right off the bat. There's Terrence Gibson with a three-pointer against the Virginia Tech zone. And, Don, I think you'll see a number of different defenses from the Hokies tonight, trying to maybe create some turnovers and get some easy buckets. It's been such a struggle to score in the half-court offense. And that's a positive sign for VCU as Elliott misses from the outside because Terrence Gibson, the last two games, has been a horrendous shooting slump. Well, Gibson, is he still hot? Yes, he is. There's your answer. got to be a plus for VCU because as you mentioned Terrence Gibson not really the guy that they look to to shoot the three. We've got a number of players who can do it. A, a Brower off the bench, Kenny Harris. Certainly McCoy can shoot it. Gibson doesn't normally look for it. Here's Jay Purcell. Thought about three. Now he takes it. Missed it. Elliott had it. Lost it. Harris and VCU on the break. McCoy follows his own miss and Carruth has it. Virginia Tech trying to pick their spots when to run. Go ahead and take that, Jim Jackson. Not a bad shot. And Carruth, a strong rebound and a putback. Trying to put some offensive pressure on VCU. And when they can create some things in the open court, just take so much pressure off of your half-court offense. All not up at six. Gibson in all kinds of traffic, and he stepped on the baseline, so the turnover gives it to Virginia Tech. Hey, see that happen. I'm not sure how that happens. It, it, all, it happens all the time with players. You got to be aware of where you are on the court. Bill Foster's very young Virginia Tech team. Of course, when you have a young team like that, it's especially important when you have a Thomas Elliott, a Jay Purcell, and a Jimmy Carruth really play well because it makes the young players better. Exactly. Uh, Elliott misses it all this time. And Harris leads it up. Gibson again. Yes! Wow. And he draws the foul. Terrence Gibson.
Gibson lighting it up early. It was Harris on Saturday, but his backcourt mate Terrence Gibson and the junior Terry is red hot. Yeah, the junior stealing the show on senior day. Last game here in the Richmond Coliseum. All the uh, activities before the game honoring them. Here's the junior with three straight though. And the foul, he goes to the line. Kenny Harris pushing the floor up the ball, playing with so much confidence. The spacing, you see how wide Gibson is. And, well, he's not going to stop shooting right now, Doc. Now, how important is Gibson now? He's three for three. Has all nine of the points. The rest of the VCU team is 0 of 4. So you'd say he's carrying a load. Purcell tries the tray. And it's knocked out of bounds by Elliott. So VCU will get the ball. It's a 9 to 6 game just under the 16 minute mark. Sonny Smith and the Rams in the big rivalry with the Hokies of Virginia Tech. More of it coming they up. Get into this one, don't they? <laughs> they were on Jimmy Carruth unmercifully before the game and just shooting around. Look at the pattern developing right now. Virginia Tech only 3 for 11. They're 0 for 5 from three point range, and that's going to be one of the keys we mentioned. How much VCU is going to sag and force the outside shot guard? Mills got bumped, no call, didn't get a travel either, and it's knocked out of bounds. It belongs to VCU. There's Bill Foster over talking to Jim Burr. He thought that had to either be a foul or a travel, and it was neither. <laughs> Happens sometimes. Yes, it does. Your patented no call. This is Terrence Gibson, who has all nine of the points in the game for VCU. Well, if they could get some scoring from Gibson like they're doing right now, it takes a lot of pressure off of Kenny Harris, who has to run the point now and score much more with Kendrick out of the lineup. And there goes Gibson again. He's Harris, going nuts. Yeah. Gibson 11. VCU, all of his points, and six for Virginia Tech. Of course, shooting's been a problem all year for this Hokie team. Well, it has, and, and it is right now. I mean, you see the pressure on the basketball from Kenny Harris. Everybody else collapsing. Here goes your guy. Well, there was a grab by Jim Jackson. And I think Sonny Smith and the VCU bench wants an intentional foul because Jackson actually did just grab the jersey of Terrence Gibson. That was the old Indiana Penn State play. Yeah, really. You know, down goes Purcell. He's got no one to go. Here he tries to go to Jimmy Jackson, and there's the jersey coming out. Usually, that's an automatic two-shot plus the ball. But it wasn't. Just a common foul. In terminology only. Here's concern with a little baby hook that's not there. Carruth had the rebound, lost it. How about Gibson again? Oh, he's human. And he misses the easiest shot he's had so far. A five-point Ram lead with the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Scored the first four in the game. Here's good. He nails a three. Yeah, they absolutely have to have some outside shooting. And they're, they're shooting it from out there. Just hasn't gone until that shot. Uh, you can really feel the intensity in this game. Gibson comes up woefully short this time, and it goes out of bounds. Of course... The Hokies aren't used to losing at home in Blacksburg anyway, especially by 19 points. And Bill Foster, I'm sure, reminded his team how embarrassing that was. And they got to beat on the backboards and uh, they have not shot well against many people this year. It was one of the games. Caruth and Kasurin was leaning over the back and reaching in, and Eugene Kasurin will get his first foul. And that's the first foul against the Rams of VCU. There's Chris Brower, the senior. Gibson gets a rest. Chris Brower, one of the seniors honored before the game with his mother here. The patented socks and the big hoop that you saw going out in our opening segment that actually sent that game to overtime. Here's Jim Jackson. Oh, that's nothing but net. And here's a guy that's been shooting only 27% from three-point line. Mills inside gets his first two. Gerard Mills now starting. He really started to play well when he went to the bench earlier this year. Has to start, though. Boy, Carruth missed an easy one. And I think 
Jimmy gets the foul after he missed it. When a guy that big and that strong gets it there, Terry, that has to be the time you want to slam dunk. Got to dunk. You got to go, go, go right to the hole. You're going to get fouled or you're going to get the bucket. And uh, Sonny, I think, made a good substitution. Gibson hit the first three. Last couple he missed. Maybe uh, he started to feel it a little bit. You know, you think you're on fire, and that's not really his game. So he brings Brower off the bench. Mills too strong on the baseline jumper. So the Hokies with a chance to move in front with 13-12 left on the Richmond Coliseum clock. I'm Don Russell along with Terry Gannon, our producer Tom Hewitt, and director Johnny Niehaus. And we're glad you're with us on Prime. There's a steal. Kassarin comes up with it, lost it, and he traveled. Sonny Smith yelling for a foul. He thought there was a reason the big Russian traveled with it. Well, there was. He doesn't do that very well. He doesn't, he doesn't handle the ball very well. Sonny thinks there's another reason, though. And, uh, I'd like to Mike Sonny one game. See if we can get that done, huh? <laughs> I tell you, he is a piece of work. He's still working outside now on <laughs> Davy Bear. Hardest thing as an official when Sonny works you is not laughing, right? <laughs> he, he is. He's the king of the one-liners. 13-12. VCU, Kassarin knocks it loose. Here's Elliott. And he draws a foul. I tell you what Virginia Tech is doing a pretty good job of right now is once they get the ball inside, they are attacking. You know, you mentioned Carruth not going to the glass, but for the most part, Carruth and especially Thomas Elliott with the spin move that time, going to the glass, making something happen, and you can get that inside. I think, uh, you know, Thomas Elliott, over the course of his career, so many times he goes and shoots the threes, he wants to go outside, but... Bill Foster's been trying to work with him for the last two years to, to be stronger with the basketball guy. And he needs to do that, especially with this team. Not a whole lot of inside help. Steve Hall checks into the Virginia Tech lineup. See if they scramble a little bit. Smaller lineup in at this point. What are they going to do defensively? Travis Jackson also in for the Hokies. And VCU brings in Rodney Ashby, number 45 in the one. 1-3-1, one, one, you should get your shots right at the elbow. Right where the uh, free throw line meets, right there. Here's McCoy. And he hits the tray. Tyrone McCoy, who has been averaging 18 points over the last four outings, gets his first points in this one. Off the dish from Kenny Harris. Inside, strong move by Jackson. He missed it. And Chris Brower goes in to get the rebound. Harris has yet to take a shot. He's running the offense right now. Jim Jackson, though, is stopped on the dribble by Harris. Now a good double team. But too good. It's a foul on Harris. Third team foul, the first on Kenny Harris. Well, we have a good one going on here in Richmond, Virginia, as we expected. It's the home team, the Rams of VCU, up by two. Of Kenny Harris hasn't taken a shot yet, but he's got four assists. Sets up Tyrone McCoy, who can shoot the three. Does so from long range, and as I said in the open, Don, I think he's really a key for this team, especially without Kendrick Warren at that swing position. He does a lot for the Rams. A lot of people forget VCU has won five of its last six games, two of their last three without Warren. There's Jim Jackson with a nice, strong left-handed move inside. Well, he'll get it done any way he can. He'll just battle you. Harris on the penetration draws the foul from the Hokies. Jay Purcell trying to step in and take the charge, but instead gets the block. I think it was Purcell or was it Hall? Bill Foster has had a lot of patience with this club this year. You know, it had all the youngsters coming in, and I think he's really developed them well. Got a bright future. But I'll tell you this story in his newspaper today. So the, it was a battle between the 56-year-old grandfathers, the two coaches. Uh, Both these guys have been around and had a lot of success. Now, that's not very kind, I don't guess, but I tell you what, he might be a grandpa, but uh, so is he. But they are certainly youthful when it comes to enthusiasm for their program. Well, Bill Foster had to treat this club a lot like his grandchildren this year. Exactly right. <laughs> you know, bringing them along slowly, a lot of nurturing. Now Kenny Harris is going to go out along with Tyrone McCoy, Kareem Washington in, and Mike Hargett for VCU. 
Jerron Mills, you know, a lot of people forgot what he did in that come from behind win against South Florida as well. He scored a season high 24 points, but Terry, 17 of those came in the second half, most of them in the final 10 minutes as well. So they really picked up for Kendrick Horn. A lot of different people have done it. Well, it took them one game, in the Charlotte game, in which they, they lost in the Charlotte Coliseum. Really struggled offensively for some identity in that game. And I think, you know, the comeback against South Florida with Kenny Harris taking over, Mills taking over, gives them some of that back. Gives them some idea what they want to do on the offensive end. Tim Jackson, one of three Fort Union products on this Hokie team. Pretty good defense by the Rams at this point. There's Purcell. That's a three. They're going to give him that. You know, if he can knock that down, they're going to be in this game all night long. Oh. Oh. Sean Mills. Didn't take him long to get it down and get it through. And that will get a coach off the bench as quickly as anything. Bill Foster up and yelling at his team to get back on defense. Of course, Virginia Tech still leads the Metro Conference in scoring defense and field goal percentage defense. There's Hargett with a reach in and a foul. First on Mike. And when you get beat down the floor by a guard, it's one thing. But when Sharon Mills beats you down the floor with no one there, not a guard, not a big man, no one, uh, if you're Bill Foster, you get up in a hurry and point to someone and blame them. Got some new Hokies in the game. We see the freshman Sean Smith for the first time. Also in the lineup, Corey Jackson and Jimmy Carruth back in. Tech was 0 for 5 in their first three pointers in the game since they hit three in a row. Can it be four? Yes. Good call. This one comes from Steve Hall. Steve Hall won't hesitate either. So the Hokies lead it by three. Kasurin against the double team. Hargett, though, he'll try a three. He has just not been able to find the range, really, pretty much the entire season. Well, Sonny Smith trying to buy some time right now. It was tied when those guys went out. When Kenny Harris went out and Sean Mills went out, McCoy. And this is not an offensive team. You know, they're, right now, they're not sure who they want to take the shots. And you can see it every time down. I'm sure those guys won't sit for very long. Let's see if it's another three. Five in a row. Yes. Told you, Steve Hall will not hesitate, especially once he's hit one. And they've hit five in a row. You may see a little bit tighter defense for the Rams. So now all of a sudden, it's a six-point lead for Virginia Tech. This is the running. The six point lead, the largest. Why not stick with what uh, got you right here? There it is. Now, this one way off the mark. Well, I didn't mean him, though. <laughs> Corey Jackson just did get a piece of the square, and I mean the bottom part of it. Corey, I, I didn't mean you. <laughs> I mean, get it back to Steve Hall. That's who hit the last two. Now, this is the guy, Corey Jackson, that early in the season led Virginia Tech in scoring. Kenny Harris back in as Chris Brower will go out. We have a chance to meet Kenny Harris with Terry Gannon coming up at halftime. Yep. Still very happy about that comeback the other night. Still one of the most amazing things I've seen. I know in the Metro Conference, in any game that I've personally witnessed, It has to be one of the amazing comebacks in college basketball of this season. Here's Harris. Great dish off the Kasur and missed it. Followed it and he got the roll. Well, he blew Kenny Harris' assist. That's right. Should have been his fifth assist. And talk about blowing it. That's what Jay Purcell did up the floor. And he was fouled as he tried to take it to the basket. Sonny may be a little bit upset at the, the intensity so far, getting back on defense. What a nice dish. Kasurin blows the little puppy, goes back, and uh, not only gets the two points, but gets an offensive rebound as well. You know, Kenny Harris in that win at South Florida not only had the 30 points, he had seven assists and six rebounds. 
Yeah, I'm trying to re free throw. remember, Don, as you mentioned, you know, one of the best comebacks and down 26 with less than 10 minutes. And especially uh, what Kenny Harris did is 30 points in the last 10 and a half minutes. I'm not sure I can remember anyone point-wise. I've seen a few performances to rival that. Lorenzo Charles, the NC State ball club that I played on, did something similar against Duke and Cameron Indoor when they were up 18 on us in the second half and we came back and won. But uh, I don't think anything else I've seen really compares to that. And it happened on the road. And the other thing is, as you look at it, personally, Harris himself overcame the 26-point deficit, takes his first shot, and he nails it from beyond the arc. Well, what do you do with him? Jake Purcell has laid off him a little bit, trying to stop the penetration. Now he hits the three and hits the jump shot. you got to come out and guard him. Well, it obviously proves what kind of team player Kenny Harris is because that was his first shot of the game. Yep. There's a guy that just took over and launched every shot on Saturday late in that one. Now you look at the Ram defense. The quick hands are hard. A little more pressure now. Two on one. Washington flips it in. Created by the defense after Virginia Tech hit the five threes in a row. You see the man-to-man -man a little bit tighter in the jerseys of the Hokies. The Hokie lead is down to one, and that gets them going here in the Richmond Coliseum. Rochelle thought about three. Carruth, a two-pointer, and it dances in for Jimmy Carruth, his second field goal in the game. Hargit. Kassarin keeps it alive, and Hargit takes it away from him. Like a little quick in the draw that time. Yeah, just a little bit. Washington, good first step, blocked by Corey Jackson out of bounds. 6-49, 29-26. It's the Hokies, but Washington takes it to the hole with a nice touch. The listings on Thursday night. More basketball here on Prime. Sharon Mills with a nice touch. Guy's third in the Metro in field goal percentage. He's a very good shooter in that position. Takes good shots, too, Don. I think his shot selection has been uh, getting better all year long, getting him the basketball in better spots. So three-point shooting, both teams shooting better from three-point range than from two-point range. It's a little <laughs> bit odd, especially with these, uh, well, at least the, the Hokies at this point. They were 0 for 4 to start, 5 out of 6, the last three-pointers. That's like having 10 Chris Browers out there. And he's not even out there. That's right. Sean Good misses. Elliott back in. Lost it. As is Gibson back in the game. And Gibson leading the break off the Mills. Boy, that was nice. That well, I'll tell you what. The catch by Sharon Mills was great. And now he gets his hand out of time. Gibson. Harris. Mills. Rams. On a roll. And Kenny Harris had to get it back to Sharon Mills. Because he caught it on the break, made the bucket, then stole the basketball. He was going to make sure that his big guy touched it. Mills, five out of seven from the floor, has 11 points total. He's the guy stepping to the forefront with Gibson. Paul misses a three, and it's out of bounds. Quite a run here by VCU and Sharon Mills right in the middle of it. Yeah, and doing it with their big guy running the floor. It's one of the things he does very well. And Sonny Smith, I think mostly because of that, thinks that he will be an NBA player. You don't find many big guys who run the floor real well, and that's that's what he does best, I think. Steve Hall takes his seat. Jay Purcell back in. VCU, 11-2 run. That's why they have the three-point lead over the last two minutes and 50 seconds. And it started when uh, the McCoys, the Harrises came off the bench. Twenty left in the first half. See a lot more movement in their offense since Kendrick Warren went out. Not just the basic high-low set. Trying to get uh, Mills the basketball down low or Warren the basketball down low. Shot clock down to five. Harris, the dish off. McCoy, the shot. And Carruth, the rebound. Seven rebounds for Jimmy Carruth. Wow. Jackson let that fly. And that time, Sharon had the right idea. Wanted to get it to somebody else to bring it up court, but he almost threw it to you. He wanted to test those great hands of yours. I was ready. I was open. 
I was, I had you posted up, Doc. You know, I know you had a very emotional day with your good friend Jim Valvano, and that had to be real special. A lot, of, a lot of emotion yesterday in the Reynolds Coliseum. Not many around like Jim Valvano. Inspiring people, uh, even as he battles cancer. Quite an emotional man for college basketball, indeed. Elliott lost it out of bounds, and Elliott touched it last, so it goes to VCU. Smith's team fell behind by as many as six, but now leads it by three. You see the time remaining in the first half. And the youngster now, Sean Good, gets a chance to guard Kenny Harris. See if he can deal with it. Good pass again by Harris, and Carruth gets the foul from behind against Mills. Jimmy Carruth really hammers Mills, but once again, I am so impressed with Kenny Harris. What I saw from him offensively the other day was incredible, but I'm even more impressed that he has remembered his role as the point guard with the great passing. Yeah, John Good trying to contain him, can't do it. The penetration in the Mills, who I think is looking more and more for that pass from Kenny Harris, too, goes hand in hand. And only guy looking more to run the show, but the other guys know he's gonna get you to basketball. Well, Sonny Smith has to be pleased with the performance of Sharon Mills in this one. He has 13 points now. And the lead is five for VCU. Purcell, he hits another three. Has two trays in the game. Watch this, they went 0 for 4. They've been burying those things, huh? They sure have. Harris kicks it out and now take it from the court. Well, we've watched Kenny Harris grow throughout this season as well. Yeah, he really has. Nice little jump hook by Sharon Mills. Mills is one of those guys that I'm not sure knows how good he can be. I think you're right. I, I think he can get a whole lot better. And I think maybe Kendrick Warren's injury has made him say that to himself. Now, I've got to take charge. I've got to do the scoring right now on the inside, and, and he's doing it. Jim Jackson, smart play to throw it off the foot of McCoy to keep it for Virginia Tech. 3-12 left in the first half. Sonny Smith pondering the situation right now, but his club has a full point. How about a run of his own? Sharon Mills started one for three. He's five out of his last five. He has scored the last 10 points for the Rams in the 15-4 run, mostly behind Sharon Mills. Doing it in a number of different ways, too, down up the court, down low. Jimmy Carruth between two Rams, missing the baseline jumper. See you up by four and trying to add to that right now. Jay Purcell back on Kenny Harris. A little better matchup. More savvy from that guard spot for Purcell. Good entry pass to Kasurin. Didn't get the shot, but he draws the foul. You know, one of the things Sonny Smith told us, I remember Terry in one of our early games, and I was even back here in December when he said, I think we'll be good late, especially as Kenny Harris really learns how to play point guard for us. Did he tell you Kendrick Warren was going to get hurt? No, he did. <laughs> I bet if you would have said, well, okay, coach, but Kendrick Warren's going to be down with a broken foot. He said, well, <laughs> for, what did I say? Yeah. This uh, guy had an amazing game in the first half. Yeah, he did. He had 14 points against the Hokies in Blacksburg. I like Kassorn. He's deceptively quick inside. Likes to take that little duck in move. He has five rebounds already, two of them offensively, as his third point in the game. And Kassarin will leave. Rodney Ashby back in. Ashby, of course, one of the other players now that forced into duty in crucial situations with the injury to Kendrick Horn. Also, Chris Brower back in for BCU. Here's a good look at Sox. And he comes up with it. And misses the three. Didn't take him long to get a shot off, did it? <laughs> no. He was giving him some stuff before the game. He said, you blew us off the other day when we were 26 down. And I said, nope, not did quite. You? Did not you bury him? No, though? I didn't. But Elliott just buried the three. Came close. <laughs> the only thing got buried was our producer's flight to your neck of the woods. And 
pass by Ashby. Just tried to get it down to Mills and do it too tall. Virginia Tech has hit seven of their last nine threes. And again, started missing their first five for Bill Foster's team. That's quite a turnaround. I think Bill Foster would like a little mix at this point, though. He's got Sean Smith back in the lineup. They can get him the basketball, see what he can do with it. He's got Rodney Ashby on him. Jim Jackson with the running jumper. Fought for his own rebound. Didn't get a good effort, though, by the freshman to try to get his own miss, but he couldn't hang on. They play hard, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Sonny very passive right now on the sideline, sitting for one of the few moments. DCU with the two-point lead in the ball. Harris, here's a three. And Sean Smith had the rebound, but McCoy stripped it. Harris, another three. This one goes. From one shooter to another, Brower to Harris. Pass wasn't a great one, and Kenny Harris gathered himself a great rhythm on that jump shot. So VCU opens it up by five as we wind down the first 20 minutes. There's Jackson's three. Got a piece of the iron in Rodney Ashby, the rebound, good movement. Good idea by McCoy, but when he tried to touch the pass over to Sharon Mills, and Tyron likes to shoot it a lot. I'm not sure he's... Uh, That's right. It wasn't Kenny Harris that, uh, that had that basketball. Mills didn't expect the pass from Tyron. Plus, it was uh, a Nolan Ryan fastball. Steve Hall in. You see Jim Jackson over on the Hokie bench now. Here's a double team in the backcourt. And VCU... Really, a big part of that comeback in South Florida, Terry, as well, was some full court pressure with three different variations out of it. Yeah, they pressured him and they kept fouling, and uh, South Florida would miss the free throw here and there, and they get a steal out of it. Well, they never give up. Pressure so far tonight has worked a couple of times against Virginia Tech, but when it hasn't, they've been able to get a bucket against them. Gets a rest. Sean Good gets open inside and gets his seventh point. So the Hokies, good possession that time. McCoy misses a three. And Purcell gets the rebound and I think got slapped in the face in the process. And I would imagine they would try to run down for the last shot. Shot clock is off. Purcell will just hold it out here, run it down to single digits and go ahead and take it. Now they look into Carruth. Purcell now on the penetration. Hall's going to take the three right now and hit it. A little early, but he buried the three, so you say that's fine. Hall has hit three out of four, three pointers in this one. And we're tied at 40. Here's Brower with his own three that's short, and we have come to the end of the first half. Well, we told you it's a battle for the Commonwealth of Virginia, and you can throw out records even though VCU's is much better. Bill Foster's team played well. We're all tied at 40 at the half. VCU and the Hokies of Virginia Tech all knotted up at 40. We're expecting a good basketball game and we certainly have that Terry Gannon and you know the Metro Conference has been a very competitive league. It's pretty much a two-team race now but I think the conference tournament is going to be outstanding. In yeah, yeah, I think it will be, Don. You know, Charlotte still had a chance, but they got beat by Southern Miss the other day. And you look at it, Louisville atop really their destiny in their own hands. If they win at home, then they win the uh, regular season title. Of course, the tournament at Louisville. Tulane still with a shot next Saturday. They play at Louisville. VCU and NCAA wannabe at this point. This is an important game for the Rams because they're trying to get to 19 or 20 wins to get into the NCAA, Don. Terry, I think it's one of the things when you talk about playing well. If you're a coach, you want it to be playing well late as you head into your conference tournament. I think this year, more than any other year, too, the, the late season surge will be very important uh, for all teams looking to get to the tournament because of the two weeks that they lost out of practice at the beginning of the year, I have a feeling the committee will pay more attention to what you do in the last two or three weeks of the season. Well, the Battle of the Commonwealth of Virginia is as good as we expected. 40-40 our score at the intermission, and we'll have more of our halftime show in just a moment. Back in Richmond, 40-40 our score between the Hokies and the Rams. An outstanding performance by Kenny Harris Saturday. That big win against South Florida and Terry Gannon visited with him earlier. 
No, it's always fun to interview a player who led a comeback like Kenny Harris did the other day against South Florida. 30 points in just over 10 minutes of play, the overtime win. And what was going through your mind, first of all, before the comeback? You were scoreless at that point, and uh, you guys were looking like you were going down, down to the defeat. Well, you know, we just uh, wanted to try to make the game as respectable as possible, and we wanted to try to um, just turn it up and, and scrap and scrape as much as we could, at least try to make a respectable loss if it was going to be a loss, and uh, if anything, try to get the win. Yeah, but how about you individually? I mean, you're scoreless at that point. You got under 10 minutes to play in the game. You're down 26. All of a sudden, you go nuts. What was going through your mind at that point? Uh, nothing really. I just wanted to, you know, take the threes off the break and uh, just keep pushing the ball and try to um, make things happen. And um, we spread the floor out, and I had a lot of space to work with, and uh, good things just happened for us. You play for one of the more colorful coaches in college basketball and uh, a guy who doesn't mince words. What were the words of wisdom of Sonny Smith when you were down 26? I'm sure it wasn't fun to come to the huddle. Uh, no, he was really disappointed in us at that point. He thought that um, it was the first time all year that we just uh, didn't really put out the type of effort um, that we needed to, you know, as a group to try to get a win. He thought that we just uh, were taking the evening off, and uh, he was very disappointed with us. And um, it kind of made us, you know, challenge us to, to have some pride in ourselves and go out and uh, if we're going to lose, at least lose going down fighting. And uh, we fought back, and um, luckily we came back with the win. Kenny, this team has obviously changed in the last week or so since Kendrick went down. and Your role must have changed at that point as well because uh, where you were just leading the team and, and being the playmaker now, you really have to look to score more. And I guess it was evident in the last 10 minutes, 45 seconds. Is that something that you really have on your mind the rest of the way? Um, it is, but I want to be, um, you know, I'm being too cautious right now because it's very difficult for me to try to score a lot and uh, since I have the ball all the time. And, um, you know, being the point guard, my role is to get the guys, all four other guys, into uh, involved in the offense. And so it's kind of, of an uncomfortable position because uh, I want to do my job and uh, get my teammates the ball and give them the opportunity to score. But I guess um, it comes to a point now where I have to realize that, um, you know, the big main score isn't in there anymore. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the other guys, uh, because of, you know, Kendrick being there uh, early in the year, they um, succumbed their offense, and now it's kind of hard for them to just turn it on. So... Uh, Rams to go to the big dance? I think it'll take um, four out of the last five, um, at least two in the tournament mm -hmm. to be really, you know, to feel really good on selection day, I think. Uh, great thrill the other day uh, for not only VCU Rams fans, but college basketball fans as well. Great performance the other day. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot, Terry. All right, Kenny Harris, the big comeback against South Florida the other day, still smiling at this point. Right now, let's go back to Don Russell. Terry and thank you, Kenny Harris, and that was a great performance, and it was a pleasure to see in person. The Rams of VCU and the Hokies of Virginia Tech knotted up at 40. We'll be right back. Please, you look to the second half, Don. Sonny Smith at this point, uh, I would imagine, would want to put a little pressure on it. I, when he used the pressure, the full court pressure, it's, it's created some problems for Virginia Tech. And coming off a game like the other day, when you use that for a big comeback, you want to ride that. You want to ride that emotion as much as you can. Virginia Tech, on the other hand, Bill Foster probably feeling pretty good. You know, you got 40-40 on the scoreboard, and if you told him at half one of the teams would have 40, he probably wouldn't have felt too good about it because they don't usually score that many points. He's got to find a way, though, to get some buckets out of the inside people, more, more than just the, what Elliott's done so far, a Jimmy Carruth, get him involved, get some more balance between the outside inside. Both teams begin the second half the way they began the game, and VCU will have the first possession. And the Hokies started at 1-3-1, in which they played uh, the first part of the first half. Bill Foster, one of the best coaches around when it comes to defense. Good movement, Harris out of the corner. 
This is the three. Kassurin had a couple of chances at the rebound, and it goes through his hands, but Carruth touched it last. Dan, I always feel that, it, that it's better to try to get an inside bucket when you come out to start a game or to start the second half. When you take a jump shot and you're cold, chances are that baby's not going in. Right. Here's Mills much closer. He missed it. Harris tries to chase it down, but great hustle by Jimmy Carruth, and then he throws a bad pass. Here's Mills. And Carruth gets it right back. Now the big Texan has not stopped on that series. <laughs> He's got a wingspan, doesn't he? He does. I ran into him in the hotel today. Now you talk about a big man, of course, I'm not exactly. <laughs> well, you're a giant. And, you know, yeah. if he was big next to you, Don, he yeah. must have been big. I felt like uh, David and Goliath. And I didn't have a slingshot either. No, and you don't have to guess who David was. His concern. Inside, lost it, picks it up, and sticks it in. Kassurin with five. Well, it took a while, but the Rams get the first two in the second half. And now the Hokies trying to counter. Elliott, a three-pointer, and he hits it. Thomas Elliott, well, Bill Foster may need him inside, but that's only his ninth three-pointer in 38 efforts. Gibson misses the tray at the other end, and it's lost out of bounds to Virginia Tech. Sharon tried to style a little, a little bit too much that time. Tried to slap the rebound. Looked good until he lost it out of bounds. This time Purcell decides to walk it up. Well, Mills was on Carruth in the first half, for much of the first half. And he's not going to come out and guard Jimmy, but now he's on Thomas Elliott, who, who just buried an outside shot. And if he brings him outside, you've got to come out and guard him. Here he is, the top. Now, yeah, see, so he'll come and guard him now. Elliott misses this tray from a little bit beyond where he just made one a moment ago. Harris, dish off to McCoy, who misses the finger roll, but draws the foul from the Hokies. <laughs> Elliott gets the foul. Second personal on Thomas. So you look at the break. Kenny Harris with the bounce pass over to McCoy. Went up and had to really get the arc on that ball, but Elliott got a piece of it. And McCoy cashes in on the free throw. McCoy came in after a 19.8 rebound performance on Saturday at that comeback win against South Florida. Those are seasonal numbers. His point average much better than that the last five games. He misses. Harris. Now Kenny feels that three. He has three field goals in the game, and they're all from beyond the black line. Yeah, and he also loves that area, the top of the key. And if you give him the three, you got to make sure you don't give it to him straight away. BCU with the three-point lead. Jackson against McCoy. Kassurin doing a nice job on Carruth. Oh, oh, oh. The baseline missed the shot, but Thomas Elliott climbs the ladder and jams it home. His eyes lit up, Doc. Well, he did. He was waiting for that. One. Gibson, and he hits a three. Well, this guy was red hot, scoring the first 11, and that's his first two since then. Hey, 14. Don, this is a game, huh? We got some emotion, some intensity here. You'd never know Virginia Tech is 1-7 in, in the league. Purcell comes up short with a free throw line jumper, but it's tipped out of bounds. Well, you love to play above the rim if you're like this guy. Yeah, if you're a big guy, you, you love to see this, too. I mean, this is a dream come true. Look at this, an open lane, and it comes right off to him. You know, yours or my luck, it'd go the other way. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have that dunk, too, Don. We have a break in the action, so they had to take the timeout. Bill Foster's Hokies trail it, but we have a good one. Going to UNC Charlotte against the Cardinals of Denny Crum. That upset the other day by Southern Miss, but UNCC still playing very well. That'd be a great game, Doc. I think it will. Of course, UNC Charlotte, great defensive team, as is Bill Foster's, has been throughout the course of the year. But, of course, a big matchup in the Metro, as we talked about in our halftime segment. Tulane at Louisville. Of course, Tulane still has to host his VCU team. Yep. 
McCoy misses from the perimeter. Let's see if the Hokies can get something this time down. They, they couldn't get it in twice. They had a waste of time out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got that. Sean Ginn gets it, and he'll go to the line. Is that a two or a three? I think he was inside the arc. Let's see. Take a look. Going to his left as well. The yep. one dribble inside. Yeah, he's well inside the arc. And the foul by Gibson, not a good foul at all. Now they are still better from three-point range tonight than from two-point range. Nine of 19 on the threes, only eight of 20. Two-point range. But the VCU lead is two. John Good could not cap the three-point play. Mills in a lot of traffic, tried to pick it up and then decided to launch it. Sonny Smith said it was touched. But Jim Burr was right underneath the basket and did not think so, and here's a turnover. As Harris leads it two on one, Mills dishes it off, and Thomas Elliott collides with Tyro McCoy, and I mean Elliott went down on that hardwood extremely hard. I thought Kenny Harris should throw him a little lob here. Instead of the bounce, that's tough for a big guy to catch that off the ground and then give it up. Oh, McCoy just caught Elliott's foot, turned him sideways, and he landed that way. And Elliott pays for his third personal foul in the worst way. Yeah, that's a terrible <laughs> way to get a foul, huh? <laughs> He'd be doing some uh, aerobics class there. McCoy has four points, but he's only one out of seven from the floor. And now we see Sean Smith, the freshman, in for Thomas Elliott, who gingerly makes his way to the bench. And what you have now with Smith coming in is you don't have the outside shooter at that big man spot. So if you're Kassorin or if you're Mills, you don't have to come out to guard him on the perimeter. Makes it a little tough. McCoy cashes in. Three points, the lead for VCU. Mills doesn't have to guard him out there. He should just back off. He has to guard him inside, though. And lazy pass by Jackson, but fortunately, Cern got a hand on it, but the Hokies maintained the possession. Jim Jackson in traffic draws the foul. He was between two rams and forced to shot up, but he does get the foul. McCoy gets it. Sonny Smith. I tell you what, he is a piece of work. Talked to him before the game, and he just said, hey, great coaching, huh? But, I mean, Bill Foster at the other end. Both these guys, of course, uh, very popular on the... Uh, Banquet tour. Oh, yeah. And both really, you know, they took their respective jobs, didn't need them. Right. I mean, they, exactly. they took them because they love to coach, and they love the kids, and they love to be around the game. And both wanted to make the programs better in their tenure. And I think even at this point, neither one I don't think is near done yet, but they've both accomplished that. They certainly have, and uh, both love working with young people and do an excellent job. Rams lead by one, trying to add to it from Gibson. Now Terrence Gibson. What has gotten into Terrence tonight, huh? He has a new career high of 17 points. It was 15. Four out of six. Gibson from three-point range. Nice dish off. Caruth has it slapped away by Mills. And watch Rams on the break. Mills coast to coast. McCoy on the follow. It's supposed to go the other way down. McCoy's supposed to take it down to miss the slam by Mills. But Sherrod going coast to coast. And Tyrone following up. Biggest lead of the game for VCU, and they got him rocking and rolling now in the Richmond Coliseum. And much more intense on defense. And a man to man, really up in the face of the guy with the basketball right now. Sean Good inside Caruth. He missed it. Good misses the tip. And here come the Rams on the break. Uh oh. Gibson at three. On fire. Wants, needs. And is he going to take a timeout? Nope. He's going to pull it off. God, they had 
Philadelphia wastes one to get the ball inbounds a few moments ago. He's only got a couple left. Doesn't want to take it right now. He thought about it. He pulled Purcell over by him. Now he's going to take it. The timeout as VCU on a roll. Sharon Mills doing an outstanding job. You see the break. on an 8-0 run, and you never know who's going to pick up the scoring slack. You know, last game was Kenny Harris, Tyrone McCoy the game before that, and now Terrence Gibson, the unlikely candidate from three, now has a career-high 20 points, 7 out of 10, he's 5 out of 7 from three-point land. Hit their first 11 days tonight. What else do you want them to do, Doc? <laughs> i tell you what. Highlights at 11. Well, we've had a lot of highlights much earlier here in the Richmond Coliseum, and most of them have come from the Rams during the last minute and 50 seconds. Yeah, and you can see defensively what they've done, too. I mean, you just want, look at McCoy, right up on Jackson. Overcomes Brown. Really, the man-to-man -man has gotten so much better in the last couple of minutes. A near steal by Gibson. He stripped Sean Smith, but couldn't hang on to it. Look at the three-point shooting in this half. Gibson's had a lot to do with that. He has three of them. Tough to shoot threes when you have a man inside your space. They weren't there in the first half. They were sagging. Jackson gets away from McCoy. Missed the shot. Desurin kept it alive. And inside, Smith has it blocked by Mills. And Jackson, a silly foul, trying to chase it down, runs into Desurin. Jackson, a very aggressive player, but that time his aggression cost him a personal for Bill Foster's team. Bill Foster may have to bring back Thomas Elliott, even with the with the three fouls. Sean Smith, really, I'm a bit confused because I mean I've seen him this year look great. I mean he's had big time games, and in the last week or two he just hasn't been the same player. Doesn't have the same confidence at this point. Sometimes now when you get in the season, things start to go a little bit bad. You know, you don't have that chance to catch a breather because you're playing game after game. Mills. Well, that's his first two in this half, but guess what? He has 17 in the game. 37 between Mills and Gibson. Here's Carruth inside, and Kasurin will get the reach in. Well, you know, I remember talking to Sonny Smith, and you did as well, Terry, after the game we had when they beat South Florida, but they lost Kendrick Ward for the year, and he was not being... He, he thought that this guy would step up. You'd see things from Mills that you hadn't seen before. And I think what he meant was to get a chance maybe to uh, give other guys the responsibility of having to score and, and having to pick up some of that. And then if you brought back a Kendrick Warren and, and all, the, all the development that's going on in, in the interim, but what a team this would be perhaps come NCAA tournament time should they get in. Yeah, he meant it as a real positive thing, not as a slap at Kendrick Warren at all. He just said, it could end up as a positive for us, and it looks like he might be right. Eight rebounds for Carruth to go with his six points in the game. Purcell comes up with a steal, and Brower just grabbed him. And now Jim Burr talking to the Hokie bench. Well, both Dean Keener, the assistant coach, and the Bill Foster wanted the intentional foul right away. Burr was not going to listen to it. Yeah, he quickly reminded the bench to not come up with those type of antics. You know what? It goes both ways, though. With yeah. coach, officials don't like to be shown up, and, and I think coaches don't like to be shown up either. And it's a fine line that both officials and coaches try to try to walk on. Brower gets the bump foul for BCU. The Rams lead it by nine. Sonny Smith's team. Here's Corey Jackson. And here comes Sharon Mills. Off to Harris. The trifecta. That's a winner. Three times. Boy, what's with the threes tonight, too? The Hokies in the first half. VCU in the second half. And Kenny Harris is gathering confidence as we speak. Game to game. He's just getting better and better. 
Largest lead of the game for VCU. Hall, here's history. He didn't get it, and Brower got the foul. Well, Kenny Harris named Metro Conference Player of the Week. But not only has he done a good job running the club, but he has had 12 really rather quiet points. I mean, he's not taking any bad shots. Just hitting the threes when they give it to him. Taking on the break when he can. Thomas Elliott back in the game, and they need him back in that lineup along with Caruth now low. Tron Mills doing the point guard duties for a while at least. He gives it out to Kenny Harris, and he buries it from the three, and Mills now wants an assist. <laughs> Looked like a patented Terry Gannon three-pointer, but now wait, you had that short line, right? I, would, I wouldn't have been on the move. I wouldn't have moved that quickly down to that spot. Well, Hall trying to get his 10th point in the game. He misses, too. He's got the foul on a three-pointer in three attempts. And you mentioned the fact Elliott back in and Bill Foster needing him. VCU went on a 13-4 run when Elliott was out of the game. Yeah, I mean, Sean Smith just not playing with confidence. Right? A player who really has played well this year. But uh, right now, Elliott, the leadership is something you can't measure. Kassarin took a shot in front of Sonny Smith that I'm sure he did not want. Shot an air ball from three-point land. An 11-point lead. Elliott, he misses it all. Well, twice we've had nothing, but McCoy, he doesn't need it. That'll be no air ball. Thirteen-point lead for VCU. Time to bring Thomas Elliott to the high post and let Jimmy Carruth operate down low. I like this setup here. Corey Jackson. Elliott and Purcell get it back and forth a couple of times. Shot clock is approaching 10. Too strong. Sharon intimidated him. And McCoy will get the foul on Corey Jackson. BCU in the second half down has been able to get some easy buckets up and down the court. Mills starts with the break. Little dribble once again. He thought better of it, though. Gave it up to McCoy ahead. The easy dunk. And we have seen that much more often here in the second half. Now Carruth will get a rest over there as he goes to the bench. Travis Jackson, number 33, back in for Virginia Tech. This is Corey Jackson at the line. Straight out, straight out. Really a tale of two halves for Virginia Tech. VCU in the first half, packing everything back. And uh, playing in the lane as Kendrick just watches on the sidelines. All he can do right now is club doing all right, though. Second half, though, it, you know, they're coming out, pressuring the basketball, staying in passing lanes, and it, the, the inside people for the Hokies have not stepped up. Brower. To Kenny Harris. I tell you what, the guy has the feeling. Well, you can see when he goes up that it's going in. I mean, when it leaves his hand, you just have the feeling that it's going in at this point. That comes from confidence. 15 in the game for Kenny Harris. That's his fourth three-pointer. Knocked out of bounds. Touch last by Kareem Washington with the hustle. And Sean Good back in for the Hokies. And Thomas Elliott will go right back out. Bill Foster's club just needs a bucket here. Something to, to get him going. Something to say, yeah, we, we know how to put that ball in the basket. We got some rhythm offensively. Hall misses it. Rebound Brower. Virginia Tech has not had a field goal in six minutes. The last seven points have come from the line. And a travel against VCU. And maybe that's the break they needed. Another fast break, and this time Brower walks. So they get it back. Bill Foster now calling the play. You know, Sonny Smith's team, if they win this game tonight, they'll go 16-7. and seven. A lot of people are not going to even realize this, but you know they're going to have the second-best one-loss record in the Metro Conference. They'll move ahead of Louisville and right. UNC Charlotte, just behind Tulane, who's won 20 already. 
I think if you get to a, to a 20 win, I think they'll go. Some people talk about strength of schedule and quality wins. I think they have some quality wins. I, I think you got to put them in at that point. Well, that's the first three in the game for Chris Brower, but his 48th of the year, and none bigger than the one he had Saturday that sent that game into overtime. And VCU is smoking right now. See, they're taking away the three. Hall would have had that shot the first half. Purcells would have been easier. Inside, Travis Jackson gets the field goal and will draw the foul. And that's the first field goal in about eight minutes uh. for Virginia Tech. That's incredible, isn't it? After what they did in the first with the threes. Brower will hit a three for you, and that time was set. Didn't rush it. Little, little playing to the crowd in senior day here. Well, Brower gets a seat. Sonny Smith whispers something in his ear. I'm sure he's proud of the things he's done. It's been over eight minutes before that Travis Jackson field goal, and that's a real brick at the free throw line. Where's the mortar? Tell me what you really mean. Here's Gibson. In and out, almost went back in. But Travis Jackson has the miss. Good board. Give him credit, not the other end. Right. Now you call it a brick at this end. He, he does. He plays hard. There you go. And he's another freshman. Out of Peterstown, West Virginia. Not knocking on him, but just he's not very good. I'd call it a brick, too. I just wanted to give him credit. Hey, hey, there he goes. He heard you. That's he's right. going to stick it right in Don Russell's face. Travis, you're my main man. <laughs> of Virginia Tech at the 7-13. VCU on a roll, 73-59. to One of the reasons, Chris Brower in the three-point game of the ring. Davis, one of the best freshmen in the league. That guy, Kenny Harris, has been doing a great job at point guard. In addition to his 15 points, Terry, he has 11 assists. He's uh, become maybe the uh, the best point in this conference, certainly one of the best, but the way he's playing the last few games and since Kendrick went down, I think he is, he's been the best. And that is a new career high for him and assist as well. He leads the Metro Conference in that category, and as we mentioned earlier, the Metro Conference Player of the Week announced today. Here's Corey Jackson missing the finger roll, gets it back, and gets it on the second opportunity. And, and Ashby had a hold of his foot as he went up. Rodney was doing the... Uh, Foot defense. Any old way you can. Yeah, that's right. This is Ashby with it now. He's been a fun guy to, to cover the last couple of years. No question. And we got Corey Jackson, who just scored, reaching in on Eugene Kasurin. So Corey Jackson picks up the foul. And now Sherrod Mills back in, and Ashby will go out. Sharon Mills, since starting, has averaged about 16 a game, but as we mentioned, at 24 the other day, he has 19 in this one. Kasurin inside, gets it, and sending to the line. And Bill Foster upset because uh, they go with the man-to-man -man in the out-of-bounds play, and they, they just lost their men on the screen. You know, and you're down 12 at that point, and you allow this hoop to happen. This should never happen. Jackson just gets beat. Up goes Kasurin, and you follow him, and all of a sudden it's a 14-point game, maybe a 15-point. Kasurin with seven points and eight rebounds. This is the free throw to cap the three-point play. Here's Travis Jackson. Don, I don't know what you do to get the ball in the hoop. I mean, they're getting some good shots. So some shots right around the, the basket, but the ball just won't fall for them. And that's been the story for a lot of this year. It's been the bugaboo for this Hokie team all season long. Just have not had good shooting percentages. Mills left open, and he drills it. Ron has pretty good range now. Also having a good night with 21. Nine out of 12 from the floor. Mm. 
special thanks to Paul Evans, our ace statistician, once again with us here in Richmond. Corey Jackson, Robert Kassarin, one side of the rim to the other, and Kareem Washington was climbing the back of Steve Hall gets the foul. Steve Hall, though, turned, and he knew he was climbing the back of Terrence Gibson. <laughs> he wasn't sure who the over the back was on, who the back was the, the over E. Leapfrog. That's right. Travis Jackson goes out. Purcell is back in. Kareem Washington, you can tell, has picked up a couple of fouls now. Hall looking for his 11th point, and he comes up short. Hall is perfect from three-point land, but he's having trouble with the free throws, and has that two rejected. How frustrating that's got to be. 77-61. BCU with the lead. Don Russell, Terry Cannon, and our Prime Network crew with you from the Richmond Coliseum. In the Metro Conference. BCU looking for its sixth win in their last seven games. This is one of the aspects uh, of their game that's developed. When everything breaks down, they spread the court like Kenny Harris. Go ahead and take his man one-on-one, -on -one and Purcell gets the foul. That's how they beat UNC Charlotte here the first time they played the 49ers before Kendrick Warren got hurt. And that's really developed throughout the season, and you, they do it very well right now. When the clock runs down, down, they get it to Kenny Harris and spread it. So they get a fresh 45. Purcell picks up his third foul. Sharon Mills. Mills, the game's leading scorer. Good patience here. Yeah, and certainly Sonny Smith, next chance he gets, will remind his club of their own comeback at South Florida. And no time to, to pack this one in and think you have it. Shot clock at 15, game clock at 4.14. And here comes Kenny. They go to the top of their head. That means spread it. Let him take Purcell one-on-one. -on -one. And he kicks it out to McCoy for a three. Oh, that's nice. I mean, it can't work any better than that. As long as Harris can get by the initial line of defense, which he normally does, he gets a dish or a bucket, and you see the new school records. The season one with 171 trays, and they've got 13 in this game, both VCU records. 13 out of 24, mind you. Another air ball from Virginia Tech, and the Hokies downfall, and this one has just been, you now their shooting's taken a hike. And they've had good shots, like you mentioned, team. Well, they've been able to get shots in the paint, Don, and... and First half, they weren't able to hit those either, but they were burying the threes. VCU came out and guarded them a little bit more. Harris, nice dish off inside the Mills. I tell you what, now you can see why the guy's Metro Player of the Week and leads this league in assists. He has about 12 of them. Makes everybody else better, doesn't he? And has done so much more in the second half of the season, gaining confidence. If Kendrick Warren, if they ever got him back, I'm not sure I'd want to play that wow. if they got into the NCAA tournament, huh? That's right. Michelle wants the long three. Knocked out of bounds by VCU. Kenny Harris now has 14 assists, giving 15 points, Terry, and no turnovers. So Harris has been doing some damage to Bill Foster and the Hokies. 82-61. This is why it's a blast to play with a guy like Kenny Harris, who can create so much, and he's going to find you. Look, behind him this time, McCoy spots up for a three, knows he's going to get the basketball, buries it, and that was number 13 tonight, a new VCU school record for a single game. And you see the numbers, VCU from beyond the arc, the school records, in both the season and a single game. Sean Good, speaking of threes, tries one. McCoy goes in to get the rebound. And this guy, Kenny Harris, with the ball now in the last two games with Virginia Tech. He's had 23 assists and no turnovers. Pretty good, huh? Not too shabby. Like to take that tandem. Two 
20 left. There's the spread for Kenny again. And they're going to work on this. Actually, Mills comes up and says, screen help out a little bit now. Another dish off to McCoy. And he puts off an up ballot shot. Going to have to hurry. Shot clock is winding down, and they can't get it off. Can't get it off, so it winds down. Kenny said it was blocked, but it doesn't change. Tomorrow in the Southwest Conference, the Houston Cougars and the Baylor Bears at 8.30. And then Wednesday, we'll take you to the Big 8 Conference, Missouri. And he's up to Oklahoma State's team Wednesday at 8.30. And then after our Louisville game in the Metro, Arizona just knocked off Cincinnati and Oregon State. That's a Thursday, 9.30, after our game from Louisville and around the rim. And Sonny Smith doing a nice uh, nice thing for Kenny Harris. Get him out right now, get him a new innovation for him. And Corey Jackson hits it. Last chance for the Richmond fans to appreciate his workings, at least at home. That's a good thing about Kenny Harris. He's a junior. This guy, Brower, is a senior. Damon Watlington, number 23, in the lineup, tried an alley -oop. And he threw it inside to Constantine Pepele, one of the seniors. Right. Seven two Russian. The first VCU Russian, right? This is Constantine now. He'll shoot, and he got the side of the glass. And Donald Corker also in for Tech and slapped out of bounds by Mike Carter. So McCoy and Mills, the only starters left on the floor for Sonny Smith. Rodney Ashby and another senior, Sharon Mills, gets a good ovation. His final home game, 23 points for Sharon Mills. And over comes Kenny Harris. Give him a high five and a hug from Sonny Smith. Target. He'll try the three. Jackson the rebound for Virginia Tech as we're under a minute. And he draws the foul. You tell me how that went. <laughs> you know, he, Constantine can't figure it out. He even got a piece of it. Now Corker forces the first one, and Bill Foster was on the bench saying, get it out, get it out. He goes ahead and takes the sky ball here over Pepple AM. And it actually somehow finds the net. And the final senior, Chris Brower. Senior that played a lot, and he and Sonny Smith, why it's been a special relationship. Here's a guy without the three-pointer, has no place. And it, it's a special time for seniors. You know, it's obvious to say that, but it really is. The last time you, you take the bowers and you get the ovation, and here's another one who gets a tip slam in his last game. Kenny Wade's over here. Yeah, we caught it, Rodney. We got it on the two. with 22 seconds remaining. And I'm sure out he'll go and get an ovation from the crowd as well. You know, to hear the cheers and, and know they're for you personally, that doesn't happen very often in a team sport. Uh, you crave that, and basketball players, football players, baseball players don't get that very often. Rodney with a chance to have a lot of fun here in his last, uh, last game at home at least. 84-66, there's a steal by McCoy. Off to Washington. Ashby! Rodney! Oh, my! He's got two Jim Rivers here. <laughs> now he's saying, Sonny, why wasn't I playing more all year long? Sean Good lets the three go and drills it. But the battle in the Commonwealth of Virginia twice at least this season goes to that man, Sonny Smith, and the Rams of VCU. So the beat goes on for VCU. They've won six of their last seven. They go to 16 and seven on the year and six and four in the Metro Conference. Well, it wasn't a close one tonight like it was on Saturday. He didn't have to come from behind, but that guy, Kenny Harris, may be becoming one of the best players overall in the Metro Conference. Good balance for VCU, and we'll be back with the Richmond Coliseum. That's your final.
Our final 86-69, the Rams of VCU over the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Four players in double figures for VCU, led by Mills with 23, Gibson 20, Harris 15, McCoy 12. Some outstanding ballots from the Rams of VCU. Now let's go courtside to Terry Gannon with some uh, happy Rams. All right, Don, thanks very much. And Sonny, I guess they're all big at this point. You're trying to get into the NCAA tournament. That would be a lot of fun, though, senior day, the last game here. Well, it was great. I tell you what, the thing that I'm enjoying is this guy right here is coming of age. He's becoming the kind of point guard that, that fits the style of play that we want to happen. And as long as he's making things like that happen, we can go just as far as he carries us. And I'm, I'm really happy with both these guys because we're getting, we're getting the kind of guard play now that we need. Well, you win late in the season in the tournaments with guard play. And, and I made the comment You're tonight, right. I think he's certainly playing as well as any point guard in the Metro Conference right now. But you look at every time we have you, it seems like somebody else steps up, too. You know, I've well, seen McCoy do it, Kenny do it, and a Terrence Gibson tonight. Well, let me tell you, Terrence Gibson has sacrificed for the team. We had so many guys needing to shoot the ball, and he was the one guy that just took it on himself to back off and not shoot the ball. He's been a good enough shooter to score points all along, and Kenny got him involved in the game tonight by getting him the ball for the open three. He might be our best three-point shooter. I'm not sure about that. Brower's pretty, Brower's pretty tough, but this guy on some nights is as good as any well, the one aspect of Kendrick Warren going down, and certainly that's a setback for him personally and the team, but other players are forced to, to develop Step at up. this point. That seems to be what, what's happening. Well, I think I made a wrong statement there, players, to start. When, when Kendrick went down, I said, I don't want anybody to step up and take over. I want it to be a five-man. But I really think that Kenny has stepped up and probably taken that role a little bit more than anybody. He and Sharon and Tyrone all have contributed more than they did before. So I'm really happy. I tell you, I'm about as happy with this team right now as I've been since I've been here. You were uh, a little bit uh, up and down on the sidelines. So you have a few kicks as well. You were excited about that. Seems special tonight to you. Well, they... Uh, Virginia Tech's kind of a special game for me. I, I really got my start in coaching there. And anytime you you know when you go back to North Carolina State how it feels to you, it's kind of that way with me beating Virginia Tech. It's not a vindictive thing. It's just that I want to beat the place I used to be. <laughs> I know how it feels. Coach, I'm going to get your players in oh, here. Bless you Good are. win, though. You. Take care. Terrence Gibson, come on in. How about the start you had tonight? Is that something you had in your mind before the game, or did that just happen? Well, I, I feel like uh, I need to step my game up a little bit offensively to uh, score more points because, uh, like, like Coach Phil said, uh, Sharon, Kenny, Ken, uh, Sharon, Kenny, Tyrone, they really stepped up the game. I was, like, still holding back. I just said, Terrence, you need to come out and shoot some more. Well, you did. 20 points, a career high for you tonight. It had to be fun in your last game here this year, at least. But uh, this man, too, Kenny Harris, has changed this ball club, hadn't he, in the last week or so? Yeah, he took a big responsibility. He stepped on offense and defense up. He's showing the leadership that we need on the team. He's, in the beginning of the year, he was like letting Kendrick uh, do the show. Now, this is why I, I knew he can do this all season long. I was just waiting for him to explode. Hey, I appreciate it. I'm going to bring him in right, right now, too. Kenny, this ball club, I think, gaining confidence as you're playing. Without your star, Kendrick Warren, if you ever got him back for an NCAA tournament, perhaps, you know, this is a better ball club than it was before he got hurt. Yeah, definitely. We, um, I think collectively we've been stepping up very well and um, taking a slack off one another and just helping out in all kinds of areas, rebounding, shooting, uh, defense. And um, I think it's been a, a great challenge for our team, and I think thus far we've really accepted the challenge. Besides the 15 points you had tonight, uh, 14 assists. That's a record for you, a personal record. No turnovers, too. You've played two games against the Hokies. You have yet to turn the ball over. That's, did you know that? Nah, I didn't know that, but I wish I could play against them all the time. That's right. That's right. I'm sure you do it. You look at what this club's going through right now, and uh, if Kendrick did come back, how does that change what you're trying to do personally? Because I know you're trying to, to pick up some of that uh, scoring slack as, uh, as you're going through this spurt without him. Well, I think it'll be a game-by-game -game basis. I think that um, I can tell early on whether Kendrick's going to be on for the evening. And if I go to him early and he's not really clicking, then I know then that I had to step it up some more offense until he gets into the groove. So I think it'll just be a uh, matter of me reading off of Kendrick. And um, it's not a matter he would take off my offense or anything because he's a great offensive player. And if we can get him the ball, that's what we want to do. And that's my job. How does this change now that you go on the road? I mean, it's great to come home with the crowd, senior day and everything. Now you go on the road and then the Metro Conference Tournament. Certainly the other day it was a slow start against South Florida. How do you get that kind of energy back up? Well, um, I think that we have to really deep, dig deep down inside and really uh, motivate one another. 
because it's going to be tough to win on the road. But I think that'll be a good uh, challenge for our team, and I think that that will show a lot if we can get the last few games on the road heading into the Metro Tournament. Did you realize that you broke the uh, school record for a single season with uh, 171, I guess, three-pointers now more than last year's? You also had tonight in this game as a team 13 three-point field goals from the outside. Two records tonight <laughs> turning into a three-point shooting team. Yeah, well, I hope it's um, I hope it's not over. I hope that uh, we can you know, cherish the, um, the remaining part of the season and uh, break some more records if we can. But um, we definitely have our goals aimed very high, and we won't settle for anything less. Uh, we're going to put the work into it. We just hope it comes out of it. And it was fun watching you tonight, as it has been, especially in the last couple of weeks. Thanks for coming Thanks by. Thanks a lot, Terry. All right, Kenny Harris, 15 points, 14 assists tonight, zero turnovers against the Hokies. Let's go back right now, courtside to Don Russell. Okay, Terry, thank you very much. Our final here in Richmond, 86-66, to 66, the Rams over the Hokies of Virginia Tech. And